What have I told you? There is one technique that's been heavily researched in computer science, and every time it has been documented to improve your learning, if done correctly. This technique has not only been documented to improve your learning, it's been documented to show that you will write better code, it's been documented to show that you'll actually do better on technical interviews, and even that you'll do better into the promotion process in the future. This technique is reflection. It has been heavily documented throughout learning science that reflection is beneficial, and computer science in particular has had a lot of research in the power of reflection and how it helps us learn and retain information. So we're going to talk a little bit about reflection, talk about some techniques you can do, because we are often approached reflection wrong. We're often not taught reflection. We're taught about how to do writing. We're taught about how to do comparison essays, research essays, talks about talking about an experience, but not necessarily reflecting upon an experience. So we'll talk about what that difference is and how this one technique, if you adopt it, can help improve not only computer science for what you're learning now, but your future possibilities in industry. So it's been heavily researched in computer science that reflection is beneficial. It improves your code writing. They sat students down and they said, here's some reflect reflective prompts. And then they would measure their ability to write code throughout a semester. And those who are doing the reflective prompts versus those who didn't improved faster and wrote better code by the end of the semester than the students that chose not to reflect. It improves retention of information. It helps tell your brain saying, this is important. I want to remember it. I want to be able to come back to it. I want to look at this problem solving again. So it helps with that. And there's even been research that shows it promotes your ability for technical interviews and also then promotes your ability for promotions in the future if you know how to reflect upon the process within our industries. Yet it is really taught and there's often a difference between what we call regurgitation and reflection. Regurgitation is as images are throwing something back up. But when we do mental regurgitation, what happens is we just rethink of a conversation over and over again. Maybe the professor pre presented something and you thought about, oh, I could have asked this question. What would have been the conversation where I asked this question? Or we tend to do it more and more of our daily lives. If we had an argument or you think about 20 different ways we would have solved that argument. That isn't really reflection, that is regurgitation. That is basically saying, hey, I'm just gonna go over this over and over again in my brain but I'm not actually going to reinforce it. I'm not going to actually create actionable outcomes. And so there is a difference because reflection has some goals built into it. And you want to look at those goals and look at those purposes before you attempt to reflect in order to get the benefit out of it. So a good reflection focuses on revisiting your experiences. Yes, there's this little part where you go back and you look at it and say, this is what I did, this is what I experienced. Not only this is how I felt and what I experienced, but more importantly, here are the details, the sort of facts of the situation. This could be looking over your notes. This could be looking over old code. This could be this idea of restudying, but there's a twist to it. It's not truly restudying. It's just saying, I'm going to visit this experience I'm going to examine my assumptions that went into the experience and that I left. And this is a big one. What are your assumptions about that experience? What are you assuming is true? And is it actually true or not? And then as you start challenging your own assumptions about what you're learning and how you're learning and the quality of what you're learning, you start setting up a goal-oriented plan for change and growth. So your end of every reflection should be, oh, I am struggling in this area, how do I grow here? So thinking specifically in more of a concrete terms, you ask yourself, what am I learning? What topics am I learning? How do they relate to other topics? What is some of the knowledge I need to have to work on these topics? What is the knowledge I'm lacking? And also, what am I struggling with? What have I done? What thing did I struggle with over and over again when I'm looking at it because I'm lacking some of the information I need? And now, between now and the next time I reflect, we call these between cycles, between now and the next time I reflect, what can I do to improve? Reflection is a very internal process saying, what can I do to improve in these areas after you identify them? It's not just saying, oh, I learned this, I learned that. It's more about 
what can I do to improve in it? And that is critical, that you sort of create sort of these goal tasks that you can look at and you can reflect back on those tasks, did you accomplish them or not? But you really need to have that structure or you're not truly reflecting. Your brain isn't really trying to set up saying, this is important, I need these pathways to start helping me with it. So there are multiple reflection techniques. We'll talk about a couple major ones here. One of them is milestone revisits. And we actually do this in industry. And the way we do it in industry is a bit different, but anytime you have a milestone, maybe it's a weekly assignment, maybe you have a project check-in, if you have a long project and every couple of weeks you check in. What you wanna do is you wanna revisit the assignment. You want to reflect on what you learned. What are some things you could have done better? What are some things that you struggled with? And you want to potentially reiterate go over. And it's even better if you have a code review, have someone else that can go over the code with you before you start this reflective process. And that is how we do it in industries. We'll have a code review. And a lot of industries is after a code review, you have a retrospective, which is a fancy term to saying, I want a goal oriented reflection based on what I covered in this code interview or what I, or this code review. And that's powerful. That is a very powerful technique to improve your capability as a computer scientist and how you're tackling these problems, how you're writing code and how you can improve on it. Another way to do this, even before you get to that, is when you're doing a coding practice problem, such as leak code or code signal, take a moment, work through the problem, set it down, come back a couple weeks later, take a look at your solution. Is that the best solution? Is there another way you could do it? Maybe you should try it in a different way. So you sort of have this review and iteration cycle that has a little break in between that forces you to review and reflect and then set a task moving forward on how to improve. There's another technique that's particularly important when you are learning. And this technique is going to sound like a lot of extra work at first, but it actually ties into everything we're talking about. It has a very, very powerful technique to improve your learning process. We talk about writing notes. And when you write a note, you want to create associations, you want to create visuals. But we want to actually go beyond that. When we think about the ancient explorers, when we think about even, well, more modern, though, only relatively modern explorers, such as like Lewis and Clark, I have a picture of some of their journal pages. Explorers used to journal. Now, a journal is not a diary. A diary tends to be regurgitation of thoughts and feelings. You look about a couple weeks later and you're like, why on earth did I write that? I can't believe I was thinking that. I learned so much since then. It has its benefits, but that is different from a journal. A journal details your notes. Have your class notes built into the same spot as you're looking at your journal. It tracks timing. It tracks evidence of your outcomes. If you're practicing spacing where you're studying 20 minutes a night for three nights a week, you document that in there so you have a record of what you're doing so you can hold yourself accountable to that record. It has brainstorms in there, ideations. Maybe you're walking down the street and you say, you know what, this would be a really cool application or this would be something that I can take when I'm learning in class and I can apply it here. You write it down in this journal. And once a week, you look through it and you reflect. What are you learning? What were some of the ideas you came up with? What were some of the things you're struggling with? What are areas you need to grow? And then you set up plans for growth. So between your reflections, you can go back and go and you can look at it and you can see what have I done forward. This turns your learning process into a process of exploration. It takes this idea, so this abstract idea of these notes, and it creates a very concrete history of my learning that I can then look back upon and I can go into what we call this metacognitive state in which I reflect on my learning process and you have this documented so your brain is reinforcing it. So instead of taking notes, start thinking about how can I do a learning journal? Now we had a group of students do this. It was the same group that was looking at spacing, interleaving. It was looking at how can we study? We said, all right, so in order to show that you are studying 20 minutes a night for three nights a week, and that you're building these questions and you're going through all these different question banks that you're looking at randomly selecting questions. We want you to document it 
through Learning Journal. And many students found that Learning Journal to be beneficial because they could write the reflection right into it. And they built this entire process of their learning and they would have one for every class moving forward. So when you're talking about reflections, and yes, it's powerful, and hopefully your instructor includes reflections as part of the assignments because they know it has been well documented in computer science to be a successful technique for retention. I hope that you look at your learning as an explorer and good explorers throughout history, really good explorers documented their process. They documented their journey. And so your journal is your opportunity to document your journey as you are learning computer science throughout these different courses. Believe it or not, looking at notes and then adding reflections to them and adding your accountability to it and building that entire thing out will do so much for your learning. If you're someone who really struggles with accountability, really struggles with, yeah, I need to do this, which admittedly we all do. I mean, admittedly, many of us procrastinate. Many of us are like, oh, I'll get to that. But if you're someone who struggles with this, this technique will help you. Become an explorer in your education. Reflection is a powerful tool. It has been researched time and time again, specifically in computer science to improve your learning, improve your code style, improve your writing of code, improve your understanding of topics. It has been shown to improve your technical interview and your ability to interview, and even your future job promotions. And above all, learning is exploration. Start tackling your learning like you're an explorer, that you have to uncover new things to learn. Because computer scientists, we have to be constant learners. And while reflection is true for many industries and all people, it is especially true for computer scientists that we develop this technique so that way we can be continue to be successful throughout our careers. And we also want to adopt this exploration mindset because the more we can explore, the more we can grow, the better our future will be in this constantly changing industry. Thank you.